Let's talk about something else that might cause you to lose track. So number one common mistake is distance, the distance between your scanner and the object. Right now, as you can see, I am at a very good distance. The indicator bar is green. It says excellent or good. So this is a proper distance range. Let's see if we move too close to it. And the indicator bar will turn orange. It tells you to tune near. And in the point cloud preview page, it starts missing something. So definitely not right. Also, see now I'm moving too far away from it. And the indicator bar will also turn orange and even red that says you're too far. And the point cloud is very unstable. And eventually, look, it started missing and everything will be gone. Okay, so number one, keep that in mind is maintain a good distance, excellent or good. Okay, by the experimental spirit, let's try to scan it with a too near distance. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay, now too near. The scanner still can capture something, but not really making sense, right? And I think it's going to create new problem. Yes, see now a few point clouds being captured and soon lose track. Okay. So definitely not a good idea to scan from a too near or too far away distance. And then let me show you how I can scan it from a proper distance, which is about, about here. Yes, the indicator bar is good. It tells you it's a, between good and excellent. And it captured the whole whale completely. So now let's scan it. And sometimes you might it's hard to control your scanner real time and you might find out you are a little bit too far away. Look, now I purposely move a little bit far away. It's not the end of the world. You just maintain a good, good distance, move forward or backward if you're too near and fix that. Okay, that's it. Still some holes on the tip, but that's okay. I'm just showing you the a proper example. So. Now, as you can see, this whale is very complete and no error happens during scanning. A number two common mistake is abrupt movement when moving your scanner. So scanning something is just like you film with your phone and you always do like this, right? You pan it very slowly and steady. You can never do like, Phew. that's not going to work. And same idea with using the scanner. When sometimes, for example, when we scan something very big, we need to move our scanner around it or from top bottom from the head to toe. And this is how you can you move your scanner. Look, let me show you how I can scan this dummy from head to toe. OK, go down. Go down. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to go around it because you know, ah, there's not enough space. I'm just showing you. Okay, let me delete that and see what's happened if we move too fast. Okay, from the toe. And, ah, tracking lost, right? So remember, you can never m jump from the head to the toe. Like when you're scanning something, you got to be from one way to the other way continuously. And remember, keep your hand steady, steady. But sometimes if you have a shaky hand, it's OK, because Range Max, it does have the IMU in there and the software will fix that shaking for you. For example, let me show you and just pretend I don't have a very steady hand. Uh, I'm shaking a little bit, but it's actually OK. Even I'm shaking like that, the scanner and the software will auto adjust that for us. Okay, number three, let's talk about the exposure. And it's, to be specific, the depth camera exposure, it locates on the left corner of your Rebel Scan page here. We're not going to go through RGB camera exposure yet. Okay, and, the, and by default, it's set by auto. And auto means the software will decide and adjust the exposure for you. But you can still choose to manually set it. And look, if we do it now, at the auto says two. If we do it by one. And the preview page, the point cloud is still OK. But let's take a look at the crown area of the uh, of the line. It's a little bit blue. 
and the blue means you are underexposed. You need to increase the exposure level a bit. Like here, now we increase to two and even three. And three, now you can see the, the lion. The body has a place this red area and red means you are overexposed. And you, what you need to do is you need to decrease the level. But let's see if we crank it up to maximum 10. Ah, not okay, right? The, the point cloud become crazy. But let's try to scan it in this exposure level and see what happens. And even though the scanner can capture some of the, the object, but it does not make sense, right? And it's very easy to lose track if we just move a little bit. Look, tracking lost, right? So definitely not a good idea to scan something in a wrong exposure setting. Now let's scan this line in a proper exposure level. By auto, it says one or we can increase just one level too. And now look, the lion has a little bit red and blue color at the same time, but it's okay. A little bit blue and red is acceptable. Just make sure not too much. Okay, now let's scan it and see what's gonna happen. Okay, no problem. Point cloud looks very complete and no error happens. One more thing is the color of the object will also affect your exposure setting. Like this white line, now the software set one, only one for us. And even two, this manually set to two, even two is a little bit too much. But let's go back to auto. Let's switch to this black line right here. Let's see what happens. Okay, as you can see, the software immediately increased the exposure level. Now it's already at maximum 10. And look at the preview page, even under 10 maximum level, the point cloud is still not complete. Some holes and even a totally empty area in the preview page, right? So one way to fix that is under object type, you can choose dark object. And this dark object will compensate the exposure level even more for you. For example, now we just crank it up to 10 maximum. And see, now the point cloud is much better, right? But note that one more thing is, um, under high speed, 16 FPS accuracy, there is no dark object for you to choose from. So you, if you want this compensation, you can only do it under high or standard accuracy. So keep that in mind. Okay, now let's try to scan it, dark object and let's crank it up to 10 and see if we can scan this black line. Oh, but one more thing is why this is happening is white color or other bright color naturally has the highest reflection, reflection rate of light. So when scanning something white or bright color, you need to keep the exposure level down. And on the contrary, black color absorbs light and also other dark colors. So when you're scanning those, it's better to keep the exposure level up and use dark object as a compensation if needed. Okay, now let's scan this black line and see if we can succeed. Now it's under 10 maximum and dark object type. Hmm. I've seen still a lot of holes in it. Okay, let's just go for it one complete rotation and see what's going to happen. Okay, not good enough. Look, on the back legs, there are a lot of holes in it. Why that's happening is because this line is not only dark, but look at the, the surface, the texture is very reflective, it's shiny. So for those kind of surfaces, this, the software cannot fix for you. Like, uh, like too dark or reflective, shiny surface and also transparent, then you need to scan spray it first before you scan. <laughs>